That's it? Hey everyone, this is my review of Girl on a Train and... Why? Why did this book become a huge hit? Why did it become a big seller? Was it because of the title? Because it derives from the girl with the dragon tattoo? Because the font on the front admittedly was kind of interesting? Why was this huge? I don't understand. Because this movie is bland. The story is bland. The twist is stupid and bland. The whole point of this film is about Emily Blunt, who is obviously suffering from super duper alcoholism. And at one point, every time she's on the train, she looks at these two houses. One was a previous one where she lived with her husband, who cheated on her with a nanny and married the nanny. And then this other couple, who she just has this imagination with, which was kind of an interesting idea. I thought that was maybe going to turn into somehow her own delusions become a greater grandeur of herself. Nope. So then at one point, the woman from the house that she sees and imagines disappears. And she thinks that she did it in a circumstance that she can't remember because she keeps blacking out when she gets super wasted. And then the film divulges into maybe thinking it's her. This film is Gone Girl almost to a T except it's Drunk Emily Blunt. The whole film follows the exact same sort of concept and sort of media watch, the uncertainty of characters, just like Gone Girl did, however, you don't care. <laughs> really, none of the characters are interesting. Emily Blunt admittedly is very good in her role. The fact that she looks like shit this whole movie it was very well done, her character is impeccable. You don't care though. Luke Evans is a creepy kind of mis misogynistic uh, woman owning dude. You don't care about him. Justin Thero, you don't care about him. You don't care about the woman who disappears. You don't care about anyone in this movie. Everyone is a terrible character. And it sounds that you don't like them. They have interesting aspects, but you don't like any of them. So the movie just is crawling along and you're just like, I don't care the whole time through. And that's what, <laughs> that's honestly one of Girl on a Train's biggest issues is you won't really be entertained. There are elements that pop up here and there about the character's backstory, and Emily Blunt's kind of mystery within herself is really cool, except about 20 minutes before the end of the movie, you figure out the twist, and it's absolutely mind-blowingly dumb. I don't understand how this picked up, because the idea of falsifying an entire history of when you see it, you'd just be sitting there going, Oh, what? If maybe they went for more than 30 seconds of explaining that shit, maybe it would have made more sense. However, this movie has a absolutely ridiculous concept of which you have to try and grasp. And that's the thing, that like Gone Girl, as crazy as it was, it could be still in a realm of plausibility. This one just... You're, the movie and the whole plot is asking you to completely go off the deep end and believe this twist, which is just, it's so stupid. But even though it was well shot and it has some decent aspects to it, the film overall really suffers and honestly, I don't care, I kind of want my two hours back because I felt really ripped off with this film. So in the end, I'm going to give Girl on a Train a 2 out of 7. Yeah, it's that pointless, honestly. I really regret watching this movie. I was, I thought that this was gonna be like, ooh, why is the book so popular? And then you watch it and just like, wow, how was the book so popular? Anyway, guys, that's all from me. Hope you enjoyed this review. I'll see you guys next time.